Why don't we just start at the top? Okay. Being the formation of the song, the beginning. Yeah, and then we can talk about the moment. Yeah, okay. I was just sitting in church uh, one day a couple years ago and um, just kind of out of nowhere, I felt like this idea of writing a song called Another in the Fire just kind of dropped into my head. And um, I texted a friend of ours, Kane, and I said, hey, I think Joel and I are gonna write a song called Another in the Fire. Kane's response was, I'm in. <laughs> which, <laughs> which for me, I was like, all right, cool. So this, we're gonna run with this. And at that point, I didn't have anything other than a, a clever title. And um, I knew Joel was kind of like in a, going through like a bit of a rough season and, and I felt like maybe the song would be really important for him. And so I kind of like got the chorus and was like, next time I was with him, I was like, hey, I want to show this idea to you. So I showed him the chorus and, um, and he went, I'm in. And I was like, oh, this is good. We're two for two. But I think we felt like it was important from the very beginning. And we felt like it was cool to be able to write a song that like, almost talks about like lack of resolution and how what you're in the midst of and where you're headed, the X factor and all of that is actually that you're not alone. And so regardless of what circumstances you're in or you're facing, you've never been alone. You never are alone, you never will be alone. And Chris had a very clear theme. He's like, another in the fire, I'm in. That makes sense to me. And it makes sense to me because I know the story, the old, the Bible story, but when that becomes real life, like do I, what does that look like now? Like what does it look like to be like, I'm not bowing to your idols and if you throw me in the fire, it's okay because um, God will rescue us. And even if he doesn't, we're not bowing anyway. Like that's real life yeah. for everybody. As the song kind of developed, I think for both of us, personally, the song started kind of going from being a, a cool title and a cool lyric to like something that I feel like we both really needed personally. When we were writing it, in separate ways going through very real things, we're trying to both kind of encourage each other. <laughs> that's what we do, that's what fellowship is, that's what community is, that's what songs I think they should do is kind of, they're reminders, they're confessions. So I'm not sure. I believe this, I believe it for the future, I believe it because I saw it in the past, but right now I think I believe it, I, I want to believe it. But when you say it, when you confess it and you remind your soul, it's amazing, like that confession precedes belief and it's in that sense, that's why I think it's really powerful. So when we finished the chorus and we were happy with the chorus, I wrote Joel and I was like, hey, like, I think I just want to try the chorus in church and see what happens. For me, that was a pivotal moment because I was ready to walk away from the song because I was honestly getting to a point where I was like, I don't know if I believe what I'm writing, so I don't know if I can write this song. Well, the week before Creative Conference, when we recorded the album, um, I you know, had to message Joel and, and say, hey, you know, um, our our boy, he's like gotten his official autism di diagnosis, and um, and that that really sucked for me um, because I f I kind of felt like I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing to like speak faith and the future and like kind of all the things that like we get told to do, and um, and so I was pretty upset and um, I didn't want to go to creative conference anymore. Part of one of the things that my son works through right now is, is right now he doesn't speak yet. And I just kind of in that moment was like, all right, like, I'm going to get this room to sing for him. And um, I'm going to make the enemy regret his decision to try and throw this in my face. And so I was just like, I'm gonna go so hard. Like I'm just <laughs> like I'm I'm gonna really I'm gonna try and just leave it all on, on the platform. And um and so we did the song and I feel like it was electric.
was such a special atmosphere that these guys had worked so hard to build. And I think like at the end of the day, um, maybe what this song has taught me and maybe what I hope that it will teach other people is the in-between's okay. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make, it doesn't affect true things being true. They're still true. They're now and not yet. They're here and yet to come. And that's okay. The key is that you're never alone in any of it. I hope that that's what this song does. I just kind of had this moment where I was like, all right, this is it. Like, this is kind of do or die for me, to be honest. It's pretty good. 